This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. As you work in SOLIDWORKS, you'll notice that every part, regardless of how you made it, has the same gray look to it. This is the default appearance that is applied to all components created in SOLIDWORKS. Many times there is no need to change how your part looks, especially if the part is only intended to be shown as line drawings, but sometimes you will feel the need to add some flair to your design. Adding colors and textures to parts is handy when you're trying to help differentiate between components in an assembly, and it's often a practice especially used in large assemblies with many components. Colors and textures are also used to create images of your design to share with others and can be used for renderings or even shown in drawings. I'm sure by now you have noticed how easy it is to achieve the same results within SOLIDWORKS but by using various methods. Changing the look of a part or assembly is no different. There are actually three basic ways you could change the appearance of a model. The first is to specify the material of a part. When you assign a material, not only are the material properties used for simulation updated, but the visual properties of the material are also assigned to a part. For example, with this part, if the intended material for this part was, say, a brass material, we could assign it here in the Feature Manager by right-clicking on the material and select one to pre-selected materials here or select from the vast library of materials available within SOLIDWORKS. So if we want to make a brass component, Select it from your library, say apply, and then close. The material will update here in the feature manager, and you notice how the part changes in the graphics area. It now takes on the yellow appearance of a brass material. If you turn on real view, you actually get a closer representation of the brass material. If you want to remove this material, just right click again and say remove material. The next way to change the appearance of a part in a model is to add a real view material to the model. Real view appearances add the visual properties of a material, but do not affect the material properties of the model. So any material added to a component using real view will not affect simulations or update any of the metadata. Whereas adding a material, as we've shown earlier, will update the properties, the metadata, which could be used for making simulations. So if you have a brass material assigned here, when you do a simulation using SOLIDWORKS simulation, it will take into account the actual material properties of brass. Whereas if you add a brass material using real view, it will not update the properties. And so when you run a simulation, it's not gonna take into account the material properties of brass. The last way is to manually change the appearances of your part by adjusting various parameters. In this section, we'll be exploring more of the process for adjusting the parameters manually, but in a later section, we'll explore how to use real view materials. Whether you are working in a part or assembly, the process for adjusting the appearances of your model are essentially the same. When you select on a feature in a feature manager or in the graphics area, you'll see this multicolored sphere here that represents appearances. Clicking the button, will show four options within a part for face, the name of the feature, the name of the solid body, or the name of the part. This allows you to apply the material or color to the specific areas of the model. Within an assembly, there's an additional option for the assembly. This will add the appearance just to the component or selected face at the assembly level rather than the lower levels. This list also shows the hierarchy of how appearances are shown within SOLIDWORKS. The bottom is at the part level, so an appearance at the part level will be shown at all levels. However, if you add in a color or appearance to the solid body, it will overwrite any appearance that's applied to the part level and all the way up. So a feature will overwrite a body, a face will overwrite a feature, and assembly level will overwrite all of them. To apply appearance, in the callout, select on where you want to apply the appearance, whether it be at the face, the feature, the body, or the part level. 
After selecting the part, the color property manager will be displayed. The most basic way to change the appearance of your part is to apply a color. Here in the color section of the property manager, you can use either one to preset palettes, load a palette, either from something that you created customize or one of the pre-created color swatches. You can pick a color. If there's a color that you found and you want to save it for later, you can add it to your pre-save palette here, or you can remove it. You can also fine tune the color by using the RGB values, which is for red, green, blue, or HSV, which is for hue, saturation, and the value component of the color. Below the color section, you can adjust how this will be applied to the part whether it be in the current display state, all display states, or specific display state. As you get more comfortable, you can also start to play with more advanced options that include adding a mapped image. So if you load an image, you can adjust the mapping using various options here, like to change the actual width, the rotation, the size, if it's going to be projected onto a face, a cylindrical object, or the entire surface. You can also adjust the illumination of the component. So if you're creating something like a light bulb or a light source, you can actually have it as a bright light. You can adjust the transparency for like glass materials, reflection. So if it's a really smooth glass material with a high reflection. Using dynamic help will help you try and figure out how to use these various areas. If you use dynamic help, a little pop-up will show exactly what you need to try and figure out. The last option is for surface finish. You can use one of the preloaded surface finishes here, and a dynamic help will also give you some information. Once you apply a material to one of these areas, so if we add a blue here, you can remove it by showing the display pane and remove all appearances from the device model or from your active model or from the call out here. It will show what the material or appearance has been applied to whether the face, the feature, the body, or the model. You can remove it from that particular selection or you can move it from the entire part. So if there's additional appearances applied, you can remove them all at this one option. In an assembly, you have a little more options here. If you apply a material at the assembly level or an appearance such as a just regular solid color, it does make things easier when you're trying to differentiate between components. And what you'll see here in the display pane is under the appearances column, you'll see two triangles. The lower triangle shows what the appearance is for the component at the component level. The top triangle will show what the appearance is applied at the assembly level for the selected component. Clicking on one of these, you can edit the appearance, you can remove the appearance, or you can move all component appearances from the top level. Clicking that option, you'll see that the top triangle has been removed, which shows the original appearance that was applied. 